In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear seminarians, with equal measures of joy and fear, you draw near to the day of your priestly ordination. Fear, because you will be drawing so near to Almighty God. Joy, because in being near to Almighty God, you have a potential for holiness beyond all others. For the priestly ordination conforms your soul to Christ, priest, prophet and king. You take on the person of Christ. He makes you into an extension of himself. He says, I will give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit within you. Not just any heart, not just any spirit, but his own. In the sacrament of marriage, the bride and the groom are made one flesh. It is an indissoluble spiritual bond that no power on heaven and earth can break. No power except death. O seminarians, on the day of your ordination, at the moment of the imposition of hands, you take on a new spiritual bond. You are tied to Christ. You become one heart with Christ. One heart, one soul, an indissoluble bond that no power, not even death, nothing can ever destroy. Once that golden chain of grace has tied your heart to the heart of the Redeemer, once that link has been forged in the fire of the Holy Spirit, you are, you become an echo of Christ in the world, your heart now has a capacity it never had before. It has capabilities beyond any human reckoning. These, as I said, are capacities, potencies, my sons. The ordination creates a link. It creates a channel, a bridge between the sacred heart of Christ and your own human heart. With every beat of your heart, you have the potential to bring Christ. With every action of your will, you can enable him to live and act in our world. That is why the fathers of the church did not hesitate to refer to priests as the saviours of the world. The saviours of the world. Because they have the capacity, the potency of echoing the Saviour, of allowing the Saviour to live, as it were, a second human life in our fallen world. Over the years of priesthood, the graces flowing from Christ's heart into your own ought to bring about a deeper and deeper transformation of your heart. Your heart which is the recipient and conveyor of such rich graces, like the river flowing from the side of the temple, upon the banks of which the prophet saw fruit trees of every kind, and herbs with medicinal leaves for the healing of the nations. What a treasure priests have hidden within their hearts. What potency, what possibility. In the book of Proverbs we read, He that keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof, and he that is keeper of his master shall be glorified. He that keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof, and he that is a keeper of his master shall be glorified. What fruits priests have at their own disposal what choice fruits through the grace of holy orders and what glory in being the keeper of the master the priest's heart conveys the master himself whilst still yet being mortal the priest has a capacity of transfiguration of holiness beyond the reach of any laity that's the doctrine of the church the capacity in the priesthood for holiness is greater than any laity. The laity eat of the fig tree, and many become healthy and fat, 
Yet yeah, this fig tree is a property of the priest. He guards it. He tends it. He is the one who shares it to the faithful. And what a scandal. What an outrage to see the faithful gaining greater nourishment from this tree, the tree of the heart of the priest, than even the priest himself. I'll read that quote again from the book of Proverbs. He that keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. That is you, O priest. Seminarians, that is what you shall be, the keeper of the fig tree, able to eat the fruit thereof. There is no holiness without the priest. And yet, tragically, the priestly heart can turn into solely a conduit, a rusty, dirty, narrow channel that drips out the graces that the poor laity have to struggle to find. Graces that failed to affect the priest's own soul, that failed to sanctify him as Christ intended, as he deeply desired on the day of the priest's ordination, when he established that bond, that sacramental and indissoluble tie between the two hearts, the heart of the priest and his own sacred heart. Seminarians, aspire for great holiness in your priesthood. Eat of that fig tree and safeguard it by a disciplined, pure, holy life, dead to the world in its distractions, with one eye always fixed on the interior Christ, the interior bond that you alone will possess and which the angels will stand in awe of. No greater source of nourishment for the priest can be found. No greater fig tree than the Holy Mass, which he offers and which is entrusted to him. And the Holy Communion likewise, the fruit of that sacrifice, which again is entrusted to his safekeeping. Love every ritual of the sacred rite. With alacrity, with eagerness, pronounce those holy words. In tribal taide, edeum quilletificat juventutum meum. You need never grow old, seminarians, if you drink of this fountain which flows from your own heart. Whilst your body will age, your souls will always remain with a youthfulness unmatched by worldlings, unmatched by the laity, unmatched by the nuns, the religious. All of these, these drink from the stream that flows from your heart, but you will have first access to it. You will be the closest and you will be able to drink for the longest and the deepest. Prepare yourselves, O seminarians, for that great moment. The designs of his heart are from age to age, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. The introit for the feast of the sacred heart. The designs of his heart are from age to age, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Words directed by our Lord to the elect, but words that necessarily must become the priest's own from the moment of his ordination, from that moment as Christ's heart becomes your heart. His designs become your designs, his plans, your plans, because you will have his heart. You must love what he loves, hate what he hates, rejoice in the things he rejoices in, mourn as he mourns, desire as he desires, sorrow as he sorrows. Your designs must be as his, your purposes must be the same as his, namely to rescue the souls of those entrusted to you, to rescue them from death. This is your mandate to seek out the lapse, the erring, the straying, those who are living in darkness, those who are lukewarm, those who are in false religions. Let your heart beat with his desire, 
his singular desire to rescue their souls from death, from the damnation which will most certainly fall upon them if they do not draw near to your heart and to the graces which you alone can convey them through the sacraments of baptism and penance. O oh, priestly heart, heart of a priest so united to that of Christ's, even now as seminarians, you can pledge yourself to this mission. I wish to rescue souls from death. I wish my heart to be a conduit of salvation for all the people. That's why I want to be ordained. I wish to share Christ's design, Christ's plan. I want to save souls and I want to keep those entrusted to me alive in famine, to keep them alive in famine. How the priestly heart ought to blaze a fire at those words. What a life's mission to keep them alive in famine. How a priest ought to gladly give his life. How his heart ought to stretch towards labours and even martyrdom as it spends itself in keeping the little flock alive, keeping them alive in famine. And what a famine we are living in. To rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. You will find this, my sons, you will find an interior martyrdom if you allow the union between Christ's heart and your heart to become as intense as he desires. You will feel this as you look towards the young ones entrusted to you, as you fear for them going astray, and as you delight in seeing them overcome temptations and embrace devotions. You will feel this as you look to those you're instructing in the faith. You will tremble as you see them taking their first baby steps in their friendship with Christ, as you reveal to them the heart of Christ, as you try and present them, even through yourself, to the spouse of their souls. You will feel this as you speak to others of Christ's mother, of your mother, and with the love of Christ, giving Our Lady to St. John, you will desire with a desire beyond all words, to give her away, to share her with others, to lead her into the homes of the faithful, to promote her rosary, her scapula, her five first Saturdays, your priestly heart, which is united to his through ordination, must live out those parting words of Christ, behold your mother, and at the same time, you must never cease to receive those words yourself because she always will remain your mother and yours in a singular degree because you will have his heart joined to yours and she will see that and she will know that. She knows that you are the one to guard the fig tree, to guard the presence of Christ, to guard the conduit between the sacred heart and the world. She knows you have the first pick of those fruits and how she wants you to be nourished by them. To be nourished more than the laity, to be nourished more than the religious. O oh, priest, this is your treasure. The blessed sacrament is entrusted to you. The holy mass, the source of grace, it flows through you, through the grace of ordination. Seminarians, let's turn to the Blessed Mother now as we close in prayer. O Blessed Mother, prepare these your sons who are already your sons through baptism. Prepare them for that holy day of their priestly ordination. Prepare their hearts for that indissoluble bond with the heart of your son so that once a moment has passed, they will be his love in the world feasting off the fruits of this love, becoming transfigured in holiness beyond compare, bringing salvation, rescuing souls from death, keeping them alive in famine. In the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.